Good morning, Cross Point. You guys go ahead and stand. We're going to get you warmed up in here this morning, yeah? It's cold outside, right? We're going to share with you some of the music we did at Avalanche this week. I was going down, thought it was for the count. Then I found your love. I had wandered off, thought I had gone too far. There I found your love. Fear I used to know can't stop me anymore Cause I found your love When I feel alone, I have a place to go
the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your
Good morning, Cross Point. Welcome everyone this morning, and uh, let's give it up for our, our praise and worship team again this morning. You know, they come in here each and every week and share their talents with us and lead us in worship, and uh, they, they, they come in here a couple times throughout the week and practice and hours, and then this week they went with our youth to Tennessee, and they just always do a great job. We're so blessed to have them. Uh, for those of you that this is your first time with us, uh, I am not Pastor Carl. I know I might be a little bit better looking, but I'm not him, okay? Uh, he's, uh, he and his family stayed in Tennessee for a little bit longer for a few extra days just as a vacation and relaxation time, And uh, uh, but he does uh, give me the honor and privilege or ask me to fill in for him occasionally, uh, and I'm honored to do so, and, uh, and I, I appreciate the opportunity. So, uh, But if you're visiting with us, come back again. Uh, Good Lord willing, and the church don't rise before then, Pastor Carl will be back uh, next week. Um, and and Nikki kind of let the cat out of the bag this morning on me. I had a surprise for everyone, um, but she she's let the cat out of the bag. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you anyway, in case you wasn't paying attention when Nikki said it, today's the last day of 2017. Okay, tomorrow's a new year. Tomorrow's 2018. And, uh, and as I was thinking of the, being the last day of the year when Pastor Carl called me and asked me to speak, I was trying to think about uh, what, would say, what I would say this morning and uh, prayed and the Lord to, uh, to lead me. And he, he laid a message on my heart this morning, and, and it complies with what the traditional message should be, I think, for the most part. You know, I think somewhere preachers learn uh, that uh, message is supposed to have three points or three bullets, uh, a way to remember those bullets, and to be short. Well, I got two of the three, okay? We don't have a, another service following this one, so hopefully y'all brought a lunch. So we, we got two of the three. Just kidding. Um, but anyway, uh, as I was looking at the message, I, I wanted to, uh, I came up with focusing on new. The word new, and we're going to break down the word new, and uh, this morning look at the letters in the word new, and hopefully it'll help you to remember uh, the message this morning. And I'm going to go th out of order of what I typically do. A lot of times when I've spoken, uh, I, w I would never, ever speak without sharing the gospel. Uh, and I most of the time end my messages with sharing the gospel, but today I want to start the message with the gospel, because it is so important uh, for us to all to know. So uh, the first letter I want to start with, obviously in the word new, is the letter N. And the letter N, we're going to say today that it stands for need. We all need Christ. We need Christ to be saved. Romans 3 Verses 22 and 23, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, I apologize because I'm going to jump a couple times with verses, but the, Nick's done a great job. They will be on the screen, so you can follow along on the screen if you desire. Uh, but Romans 3, 22 and 23 says, There is no difference between Jew or Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Every last one of us, it doesn't pick and choose. We all fall short of the glory of God. There's another verse in the Bible that says, not even one, not any of us are without sin. 1 John 1 through 8 says, if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourselves and the truth is not in you. To claim you have no sin is a sin. We all have sin, regardless of what the sin may be. And because of this sin, because God is a holy God, He cannot be in the presence of sin. And because of the sin that we all have, it separates us from God. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his 
own love for us, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Sin separates us from God, but God still loves us. He wants that relationship with us. He wants us. That's the reason why we were created. He wants us in relationship with him. With with sin, we cannot have that relationship. So he made a way for us. While we were still sinners. It wasn't after... um, I've got this sin in my life, or whatever sin you, you, you may know that you're convicted of or you have in your life. He's not saying, go get rid of that and then come to me. He's not saying, quit lying, quit cheating, quit stealing, quit doing whatever it is you're doing that is sin. Then come to me. He says, while we are still sinners. He died for us. He paid the price and sacrifice for us. A very familiar verse uh, that many of us learned as we were growing up uh, or continue to learn. John 3, 16. And I want us all to say that together. Nick's going to bring it up on the screen for us. And join me in reading this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, not everybody joined, so we're going to do it one more time, and I want everybody to join as we read this thing, okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Folks, I'm, I'm a proud father of three teenagers. And I love those teenagers, those children, more than anything in this world. And there's absolutely nothing I would not do for them. And I love each and every one of you. And there's a, probably only one thing I wouldn't do for you. And that's sacrifice my children. Those of you that are parents understand that. There's nothing you wouldn't do for your child. But you also wouldn't give your child for anything in this world. God had one. He only had one. And he sacrificed it. For you and I. You know, as parents, we have no greater love than for our children. God sacrificed that for us. Is there any question in your mind that he loves you? If he's willing to do that, he sacrificed his only child for us. I think it's fair to say that God loves us. Every action has a consequence. We know that. So what is the consequence of sin? I already talked about we all have sin. And what is the consequence of that? Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Wages of murder. Nope, don't say that. Wages of rape. It don't say that. Wages of lying, cheating, stealing. Wages of breaking a commandment. Wages of not tithing, waiting of compromising your testimony by drinking, cussing, whatever it may be. It doesn't say that. It says wages of sin. Regardless of how we want to classify different sins here on earth, the Bible does not. The wages of sin, any sin, no matter how little you may think it may be, or how big you may think it may be. The wages of any sin is death. It's that simple. We all deserve death. First, let's look at the word wages. The term wages means getting something in return for something being earned. Those of us that have jobs, we go to our jobs, 
we perform a task, we perform a duty, we perform whatever it is our job expects of us. And then we receive a wage for that. That's what a wage is. Receiving something because of something. Here, sin has earned us death. So let's look at the term death. The term death here is not only speaking of the physical death. And spoiler alert, I'll tell you now, this is a spoiler alert. So you may want to plug your head. No. From the moment you were conceived, Every heartbeat you took from that point forward was one heartbeat closer to a physical death. Ain't that depressing? I don't mean to depress you this morning. That's the reason why I said spoiler alert. But that's the truth. We are all going to experience the physical death unless the good Lord returns before then and you know him. We're all going to experience the physical death. The death that we're speaking of here when it says sin has earned us death is the spiritual death. And that is the death of having eternity with, with our Lord and Savior or with our Father. Because of the sin, we cannot be in his presence. We cannot be with him. We cannot spend eternity with him. Sin brings on death. Christ paid the death for us. Jesus' death of sacrifices for our sins is the way that gives us eternal life with him. John 14, 6 states, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He is the only way to Christ, to God. Though Jesus has paid the price for him, we must, or for us, we must acknowledge and accept this gift. You know, we just got through celebrating the Christmas season, and during the Christmas season, many of us will exchange gifts around, and many of you receive gifts. But if I were to have a gift for you right here, right now, it's not yours until you accept it. The gift of salvation is a free gift waiting for you to accept it. That's simple. It's not complicated. It's not hard. Simple gift waiting for you to accept it. Romans 10, 9 and 10 reads, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 10 says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. That's simple. Believe Christ is who he is. Accept it. Believe it. Confess it. It's that simple. You can't get up here and sing a bunch of beautiful songs. You can't raise your hands to him. You can't write checks to the church. You can't stand out in the parking lot and greet. You can't even bring messages. I'm a firm believer there can be a lot of preachers in hell. You've got to have the conversion in your heart. You've got to believe Christ is who he said he is. That's the only way to salvation. It is not through works. It's not through actions. We cannot earn it. It's a free gift. Jesus was born of a virgin, conceived not by man, but of the Holy Spirit. He walked here on earth, 100% man, 100% God. He died on the cross, was buried, and thank goodness he conquered death and rose on the third day. And he now sits beside our Father, and he's coming back. He's coming back. I cheated. I read the end of the book. Christians, we win. And I know this is a crazy, horrible world we're currently living in. Just this morning, I received a message. Multiple police officers shot just outside of Denver, Colorado. The scene is going on as we speak. I got the message while the praise and worship team was up here. 
That's how crazy of a world we live in. The world is just so full of sin. It's so crazy. And unfortunately, it's probably going to get worse. But according to the book, I believe, the end of it says, we win. Every knee will bow. Every mouth will confess. He is Lord. We win. Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We are guaranteed our salvation. No ifs and buts. Whosoever. It doesn't say every man. It doesn't say every woman. It doesn't say every black, white, Hispanic. Regardless, it doesn't have any stipulations there. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. We can know that we are saved by accepting this free gift. 1 John 5, 13 tells us that if we believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. Not hope, not guess, but know you have eternal life. For the person who's sitting here right now, you've never accepted Christ. You're not guaranteed another breath. You know, I, I spoke earlier about every heartbeat is one beat closer. None of us know when that final heartbeat is. Don't make it too late. Do not leave this building today. Do not attempt to start 2018 without knowing Christ. We all need Christ for 2018. Second word uh, letter is E. I want to talk about is experience Christ through study. You already know Christ. You profess to be a Christian. Do you know what you are? Or what you claim to be? He didn't fuss at me first service, so I'm going to call him out again. Eric is, claims to be a mechanic, and I would dare say he is a good mechanic. But he didn't get that way without studying. If you call upon an electrician, they claim to be an electrician. Don't you hope they have studied? Chance, HVAC, you call on Chance, come work on your heat pump. Don't you hope he studied? You go to the doctor, you call a lawyer, whoever it may be, whatever they claim to be, don't you hope or expect they have studied what they claim to be? You claim to be a Christian. Have you studied what you claim to be? 2017, early in the year, I, I lost a friend of mine. He died to brain cancer. He studied. He was in EMT class. That's where I come in contact with learning through the rescue squad. And he was sitting in class, and he, he, the instructor that normally taught the class was out that day or that session. And the class had the unique opportunity that the author of the textbook that they were using for the class is local or was born Local. And it just so happened he was in visiting family. So the instructor said, hey, will you fill in for me while I'm out for this session? So, I mean, how cool is it that you're taking a class and the author of a book, of the book you're using, is the one presenting the material? So the author of the book, he, he didn't know any of the students and so forth. So just to break the ice and to kind of introduce himself a little bit, he's... Uh, talking around, he's pop quiz and asked him some questions in the textbook just to loosen up the ice and get everybody comfortable. And he tosses out a question and Jack raises his hand and he answers the question and the author says, no, that's not exactly right. And he starts looking around for someone else to answer. And Jack says, wait a minute. If that's not right, why is the book you wrote on page such and such say that it is? Jack had studied. He knew what the textbook had said, and he had studied it. 
I think that's kind of obvious. It was also kind of funny to see. Romans 10, 2 reads, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The Apostle Paul here is, tells us we are transformed through the renewal of our mind. So why is it so important to study? Study is a constant in our lives. We are constantly, every day, learning something. As babies, as children, we're constantly discovering the world around us. As adults, we're studying the news, see what's going on around us. We study our profession to learn our jobs. Mentioned earlier, I got three teenage children. I study them because sometimes they just really make me say, What on earth were you thinking? Those of you who teenagers know what I'm talking about. And you, you find yourself studying and going, why? Question a half while you're Christian, who is around you that's looking at you going, why? You know better. You profess to be a Christian, you know you shouldn't be doing this. Why? How we study? Do we know who we claim to be? How much time do we spend studying? Sorry, every time I hear a siren, I have to say a prayer. I've been in a profession too long. That somebody's having a bad day if that siren's going off. Study is the experience of faith seeking and understanding. Through our study, our patterns of thinking and living will change. You know, quite often we, we say, we, we get ourselves kind of in a slump or down, and we're like, I'm not quite sure what the will of the Lord is for me. I'm not quite sure what he's calling me to do. I'm not quite sure what he's expecting me to do. Pretty clear, Romans 12, 2, as I read earlier. To be able to test and approve what God's will is. That's why we study. How do you expect to know what God's will is if you don't study? One could argue that study is more important today because the world is constantly changing at a faster rate, especially us as Christians. Do we know who we profess to be? Christians who study will be equipped to share the outlook and call people to realistic faith. You know, we claim to be a Christian. We claim to have a relationship with Christ. Are we able to share that with those around us and what it means to have a relationship with Christ? Sure, we can, we can share the transformation that may have taken place with us, that Christ helped us turn from this way of lifestyle, move on to another. But are you able to really, truly share who Christ is to someone that comes up and asks you. You learn that by studying. Let's use our imaginations just for a moment here. And let's imagine that you're confronted with just a huge pile of nuts and bolts, washers, other pieces of hoses and so forth and you're told that that is a very complex machine and it's in its rarest form all the parts are there every last one of them but not even one nut and bolt is put together those of you that are not mechanically inclined, let's use an example of um, a recipe. You had all the ingredients, every last one of them, there. And then you are told to convert this pile of bolts 
or this recipe into the final project so that it can perform exactly how it is expected to do. Now, I know some of us men in the room are probably going to at least attempt this task without the instructions. I mean, come on, face it, you lose your man card if you read the instructions, right? But I also would say that we probably wouldn't get very far. Super complex machine, lots of parts, lots of ingredients, and we are now called to put it together, make it perform how it's expected to do. And in front of us now, the inventor of that machine or the inventor of that recipe says, here's instructions. Read, written out for you in detail. Have at it. I think we'd all pick up those instructions. Is there anything more complex than, than life? I don't care if you're young, old, male or female. Life is very complex. The creator of life, our Father in heaven, gave us the instructions. It's our Bible. Why on earth do we attempt life as complex as it is, without using the instruction manual given to us. You may be sitting here and say, Matt, I hear you, and you're correct, but I don't have time. I get fussed at quite often for being so blunt, so I'm just going to be blunt here today. The truth is, is we find time for what is a priority. It's not an excuse, folks. I hear you, and you're correct. I don't know what to study. Ask. Ask Pastor Carl. Ask other Christians. Get involved in a growth group. They will encourage and help each other. You will encourage and help them. You may say, I hear you, and you're correct, but I don't understand parts of the Bible. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm there with you. Don't understand a lot of it. In fact, the Bible even tells us that it's parts of it we will never understand. It tells us that. I actually consider reading as a personal disability. I can't comprehend what I read. I can sit in a class or under a speaker, zero in on a speaker, pay close attention, don't do no good, take a note, because I'm not going to know why I took the note. But I can focus on the speaker, and I can learn. I'm an audible learner. I'm a visual learner. I can't read and understand what I read. When I was a state trooper, I would investigate a motor vehicle crash, read about it in the Marshall Bullet the next day, and have no clue what they're talking about. Some people said it was because of the Marshall Bullet, but no, I think it was my reading comprehension. Okay? So I get it. I can't comprehend a lot of what I read, too. And if you notice, I haven't said read your Bible. I've said study your Bible. Study is more than reading. Study is looking into it, digging into it, applying it to what you're doing. Look at what it's saying. Break it down. If you're a Christian... You must decide to make knowing who you are a priority. Experience Christ through study in 2018. So we know we need Christ. We know we need to experience Christ through studying. And the W of the word new is worship Christ with others. 
But daddy, I don't want to go to church. It's no fun. It's boring. That translates to they have never been to Kids Point. Because if your children have been to Kids Point, you will not hear that out of their mouth. I can almost guarantee you that. Maybe an adult would say, well, I've lost interest. I don't get anything out of it. It doesn't do me any good anymore. Or they won't let me sing. They won't let me play the drums, run a camera, usher, greet, fill in a blank with whatever you would like for it to be. They won't let me do this. Oh, one of my favorites. I don't go to church because he or she hurt my feelings. Christ's feelings got hurt a lot. His feelings are still being hurt today. His love never changed. His commitment to you never changed. Have you ever heard someone or a child or anyone say these things? If we're all truly honest, we probably, we would admit we felt these things from time to time. The Bible tells us to meet together as believers to encourage one another. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. 25, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Number one reason why we should be attending church and coming together as a body of believers is the Bible tells us to. It tells us to come together to encourage each other and to lift each other up. Visitors, if you're here today and and this is not your regular church, we would love to have you join us on a regular basis. But more importantly, get connected with a church. It doesn't have to be Crosspoint. Get connected with a God-fearing, Bible-preaching, Jesus-loving, church those of you watching on television or internet we're so glad you tune in each week and watch us but we would love to have you here in our presence with us each and every week I would encourage you to consider that and again if it's not joining us here at Cross Point get involved with a church somewhere as a member of the body of Christ, we belong to each other. Romans 12, 5 states, So in Christ we are who we who are many from one body, and each member belongs to all the others. The body is a very complex combination of a lot of stuff. All the way down from or starting with organ systems all the way down to the smallest of a cell or the components of that cell. We all are the body of Christ. We all work together to perform what Christ has called us to do. It is for our own good and for us to be in fellowship with other believers. We need each other to grow in our faith. When we give up attending church, we risk the unity of the body. We risk our own spiritual growth, our spiritual protection. We risk the blessings of being connected with Christ. So as we close out 2017 and look at 2018, commit to be in the house of the Lord. Every opportunity in 2018 to worship Christ with other believers. 
new. We need Christ. We experience Christ through study. And we worship Christ together. You're already a Christian. The need is taken care of. But what do you have that you're carrying around? What junk are you carrying around in your life that you need to leave right here at this altar? What a better time to start off than starting off a new year with all of 2017. That junk that's happened. That junk that you're still carrying today. That junk that you're still worried about. That junk that's still pressing on you. That junk of that sin that's still controlling you whatever it may be leave it right here no greater time and in doing so commit to experiencing and worshiping our Savior if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior I've already shown you only one way it's easy it's simple it's a free gift and you're not promised that next heartbeat so don't start 2018 without Christ take care of it today take care of it right now I've given you the plan of how to accept Christ as simple as I know how. It's not complicated. Believe that He is who He is and accept the gift. It's that simple. If you've never accepted Christ, don't leave this room without getting it right. You know you're a sinner. I've showed you that in God's Word. Do you want forgiveness for your sins? Do you want to put them all behind you? Do you believe Jesus died on the cross and rode again on that third day? Are you willing to surrender yourself to Christ? You know that little tap, that little bit of sweatiness of your palms? I don't know who I'm speaking to, but there's someone that's feeling the sweatiness of those palms. That heartbeat picking up a little bit. There's somebody saying, how does he know? He's talking to me. You know who you are. It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit doing that. Because he wants a relationship with you. Are you ready to invite him into your life? If that's you, I'm going to lead you in a little simple prayer. It's not my words that's saving you. I've already showed you. In the Bible it says it's the belief in your heart and the confession of that that saves you. Christian, you, you should be praying right now because there's somebody in this room that's feeling that Holy Spirit conviction. As we all bow our heads and close our eyes, I want to ask you, that person that is feeling that conviction or, or feels that speaking directly to them, I want to ask you just to commit to Him today and say a little prayer. Again, it's not my words. It's the condition of your heart. But just say a little prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being who you are. I know that I'm a sinner. And I want forgiveness for my sin. I know Christ was sent here as your only son. He died on the cross. He rose again. 
just for me. I thank you for that, Father. And the best I know how, I ask you now to come into my heart and save me. And I commit to being who you've called me to be the best I know how. If that was you that said those words with me this morning or something similar to those words, there's another passage in the Bible in Matthew that says, anyone who confesses Jesus before men, he will likewise confess before our Father. All heads are bowed and all the eyes are closed. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. But as you've seen earlier, when we hear of someone accepting Christ here at Crosspoint, we get excited. And we want to celebrate that with you. We want to share that experience with you. If that was you this morning, again, I'm not going to call you out. Let me celebrate with you. If anyone said that prayer this morning, would you raise your hand? Raise it up high so that I can see it. Because I want to celebrate that with you this morning. Someone watching on television, on the internet. If you accepted Christ this morning, please reach out to us. Call us. Email us. Let us know so that we can celebrate with you. For someone this morning that accepted Christ and didn't raise your hand, Please put it on your communication card or either save me in the foyer when you get ready to leave or any, any of us here. We want to share that with you. We want to encourage you. We have a free gift we want to give you to help encourage your, your walk with Christ. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your presence this morning. We thank you for your Son. We thank you for the sacrifice of him. We thank you for blessing us with a new year. And Father, as Pastor Carl has already shared, the vision you've given him for this congregation, Father, I ask that you continue to work in each one of us individually as we experience you through study and as we worship together as a congregation. I know there are great things that you have planned for Cross Point, for Marshall Henry County, and for us as individuals. And we thank you for that. Please be at the remainder of the service as we close out the song. And it's in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Happy New Year to everyone.